Hey YouTube, Corpus Sand here. So you reached level 200? Nice, but uh, uh, now what? Well, now is where the game truly begins. In today's video, I'll be playing on an Explorer Paladin and I'll show you where I trained, which bosses I defeated for gear, and we'll talk about how to keep progressing all the way up to level 220. Getting to level 220 during the Destiny update on an Explorer does have its advantages. You'll be able to get 20,000 Maple Points, which you can then use to get a Battle Pass for free, or you can use those to dress up your character if you want to go for that fashion endgame. This Paladin is burning and we will be making use of the burning event rewards as well as the Destiny Explorer Redux rewards. Just to mention it one more time also, for everyone who didn't know yet, if you're struggling to get those final levels in, use the level 190 scrapyard quest called Haven, a new home, to get a free level up. This works at level 199, so you'll be level 200 right away after completing this small quest line. Also, if you're starting on the main or you have plans to turn your character into a bossing mule, make sure to start the Rude Abyss quest line. You'll still have to defeat the normal bosses five times before you can fight their Chaos versions. These bosses are necessary to defeat so you can get permanent level 150 gear. This quest line cannot be skipped, so make sure to start it on time. I also defeated the boss in the meantime. I defeated Chaos Horntail for a ring and Horntail Pendant. Once you completed the fifth job advancement, go to the Temple of Time and take the middle door to get transported to the Arcane River. This is where you'll be spending most of your day. Complete the quest line here from Kao or skip it if you already completed it before after you complete that final timekeeper quest line, the one where you have to defeat one happy Erda. I also started upgrading my gear. I had some spare mesos that I collected on my main just to make sure that I had a bit of an easier start. If you're just starting out, use occult cubes and craftsman cubes to try and get most of your gear to epic and try and get 6% of your main stat. Always upgrade your emblem, secondary and weapon first as those items get attack and magic attack lines. Those are way more powerful than stat percentages so always try to go for those. You want to roll at least 6% attack or magic attack on them. The more the better of course. If you're not funded, you'll get most of your cubes from boss monsters, so make sure to take those on as much as possible. For Star Force, I just got all my items to 10 stars and that's it. Before we start our grind, I also always get the Holy Symbol node stone. You get a ton of nodes from the Burning event and the Explorer Redux event if you're using those. If not, then uh, uh, yeah, either hope you get lucky and that you get it fast, or if you're on a regular server, buy some nodes from other maplers. I usually disassemble nodes like Rope Lift, Purple nodes that I don't need, or Boost nodes that I have attacks that I never use to get some node shards if I don't get the Holy Symbol node right away. You'll need 140 node shards to create a holy symbol node. I also always boost this node a little bit if I have some EXP node stones. This skill will help you grind faster, you know you get more EXP. And you'll find more nodes as it also increases item drop rate. It's a must have. We're almost ready. I also defeated normal Acarium for another pendant. You can use the Explorer Redux gift to get another pendant slot or buy it in the general store in the reboot server. I also did two runs of Monster Park which gives you really good EXP. And completed my daily quests for even more EXP. In the first area, NPC Rona has daily quests for you. Complete those to get more Arcane Symbols, which you can then double click to fuse with the one you have equipped. Those Arcane Symbols will make up a big part of your stats at one point, so make sure to complete your dailies. Talk to the NPC next to Rona called Nina to start party quests. This quest can be completed three times a day for additional symbols. In this area you can get most of your symbols from the daily quest from Rona though. But hey, the more symbols you can get the better. The quest from Nina is a party quest but can be done solo as well. By the way, if you get any additional Arcane symbols from the event, like those Arcane symbols select is where you can pick which symbol you want to get. I would save those if I were you. The first two areas in the Arcane River are pretty easy to get symbols from. For the third area though, Lachlan, it's pretty hard to level up that symbol. So if you plan to go all the way, then it might be better to wait using your Arcane Symbol selectors until you hit level 220. If you just want to get to level 220 as fast as possible, then of course you're free to use the selectors as you wish. While I was filming this, it was Sunday and literally every map was taken or had like very low burning or no burning. I would actually prefer to train in the Arcane River as monsters do drop nodes there, but since we didn't have any nice spot to go to, I instead went to Scrapyard Lot. This map is flat and has decent spawn, especially when you're using spawn boosters. You get those from the cash shop with reward points. Also make sure to activate those stones that you got from your 5th job advancement for some additional EXP gains. I usually use those to just finish up a level. At level 202, a map finally freed up. I went to Western Cave Part 2. Raging Erdas or Happy Erdas are fine to grind at as well if you're not strong enough yet to take those on. The map below the cave is really nice as well, but that map was also super busy. 
Paladin's grinding is pretty crazy though, we didn't have much trouble leveling here. At one point I left the map to get an MVP and used the free time we had while waiting to cube some of our temporary Fafni gear. I would just reset it with our cold cubes and try to get either 6% or 9% strength. No need to go hard on this gear as you'll replace it in a few days anyway. And after we grab our MVP of course we go back grinding. Arcane power works the same as Star Force. The more you have, the more damage you'll do to monsters in the Arcane River and the less damage those monsters will do to you. I usually put 6 points in Arcane power in my hyperstats and our Eternal Flame title also gives them some additional Arcane power. This will help us deal with the monsters over here. We reach level 205 and it's time for some more upgrades. I claim most of the rewards from the Explorer Redux event and use the EXP node stones on my Holy Symbol node stone. The more EXP, the faster we'll level and the more drop rate, the more nodes we will find. In our new slot, I added the Decent Sharp Eye skill. The skill increases critical rate and critical damage. Now I can swap out one of my critical rate link skills for more damage. We also got a lot of boost nodes as well, but in my case I didn't find a nice one yet, so I'll go over those in a bit. Reaching level 205, we now unlock Reverse City. You have to complete this questline. It gives you about a level worth of EXP by the time you're done and rewards you with additional symbols. In our case, I already completed it once before, so I just skip it so I could just keep grinding. I usually grind at T-Boy's research train, but hey, guess what? All those maps were either full or had no burning. MapleStory is so busy nowadays. So instead I went to T-Boy's research train 2 and started my grind there up to level 210. Make sure to use monster park potions, MVP buffs, EXP buffs, event EXP buffs and spawn boosters to level up as fast as possible. If you're bored of grinding, don't forget to participate in the Star Bridge event as well. Talk to Beta Buddhist in the event map to start this one. This Star Bridge is a mini game that can be done twice a day per world so you can't do this on multiple characters. This quest will give you a ton of EXP and because it was a sunny Sunday event it gave even more. This is like free level ups galore. Okay, so it was towards the end of the day, we now have 3.7k stats and I still did not have any Zakuma accessories. I guess we just have to take on the big man himself to force some drops. Kill Zakuma is not easy, unless of course you're a paladin. And having high legion and link skills does help as well of course. But still defeating this boss with these little stats was quite crazy to me. You can watch the full fight on the clip channel. With Kiel Sukum surprisingly defeated, I got a new cape and finally got one of the face accessories. We're continuing the bossing spree, I also got a badge from Easy Magnus, new earrings from Kiel's Horntail and a new belt from Pink Bean. And finally I also unlocked my pocket slot after getting charmed to level 30 so I can equip one more additional item. We're now at 4.4k stats and our equipment looks a lot better, except for that hole where my eye accessory is supposed to be, thanks Sukum for still not dropping that. We continue to grind and reach level 210, unlocking the next area, Choo Choo. So we skip the quest line and get our new symbol. That's 5k strength already. Also, I did not do my dailies yet in the Vanishing Journey area. Because every time you unlock a new area, you'll have to do one less quest from your daily list. So to save a bit of time, I waited until I unlock Choo Choo. You'll also get more symbols from the previous area's daily quest if you unlock the next area. So it's worth to wait if you know you're gonna reach the next area within the same day. I trained that hill path because literally every other map was either taken or again had no burning. Also, don't forget to claim your level 210 burning rewards if you're burning. This ring is pretty OP. And at this point, the day was ending, so I still had to do my Choo Choo dailies. The dailies in this area are sort of the opposite of the first area. The daily quest will give you very little symbols where you have to defeat those monsters. However, the party quest in this area will give you a ton of symbols. If you can find a friend like this big blue paladin over here, you'll be able to go to hard mode right away. The easy and normal versions will give you less symbols. You can go in solo, of course, but usually you'll find people looking for parties around here. Also, now with one more note unlocked, it was finally time to work on our boost note. I saved a lot of them as you can see, and I disassembled the ones where the first skill was a useless one, the one that I didn't want to boost. With boost notes, you ideally want to have one grinding and one bossing note, or more depending on how many skills your class uses. For me, I wanted to get a grinding note with Divine Charge, Divine Judgment, Final Mark, and Final Attack. Those skills I mainly use when grinding, getting those boosted should help us clear monsters even faster. I do use Heaven's Hammer a lot as well, but that skill is still one-shotting, so there's no need to boost that at the moment. Later on, I'll get a boost note with Blast, Heaven's Hammer, and either the Bind, or Final Attack, or any other useful skill for bossing. I also upgraded our new grinding note so we can immediately feel its effects. By the way, if you're not feeling strong enough, feel free to use some of those event coins to buy more notes and EXP notes in the event store. 
The next few levels I grind at Dili Dobber Forest 1. I also like to grind at Slurpy Forest Depths, but those maps were taken again or had low burning. It's so busy. We grind here all the way to level 216, as the level 215 rewards from the burning event are 4 level up potions. You can keep grinding in this map or move over to Yum Yum Island if you're strong enough. Slurpy Forest Depth is really nice as well, but you can assume that map to be pretty busy right now. Now, with Latchlin unlocked, we drop all our free symbols on the symbol of this area. I completed a few more dailies to level up the other ones as well. We can now already take on stronger boss monsters like Hard Hilla, Empress and Normal Magnus. I still have not unlocked Chaos Root Abyss, but I have a feeling that those bosses are not going to be too hard to defeat either now. The new explorers are crazy strong. Normal Magnus even dropped a shoulder by the way, how kind of him. Reaching level 220, we accept our free Absolute weapon. I will give the other one to my Fire Poison Mage, who I will get to level 220 next. And now we also have our free 20k maple points so we can buy the battle pass and double our rewards. Keep upgrading your gear as you move along with the free cubes from bosses or cash cubes. Don't Star Force too much yet until there is a sunny Sunday discount on Star Force. Also of course make sure to do your dailies, also this one and Lachalin. And for the final tip, since everyone is going through maple at full speed, make sure to complete your weekly quests in Scrapyard and the Demon Camp. You'll need those rewards from those weekly quests for the next gear set, the Absolute gear. So the faster you start doing this, the better as well. And that was all for today. I hope this video was useful. And as always, many thanks to our members for making these videos possible. Thanks to Niels de Konek, Rama Waar, Sebastian Hanoi, Riley Oss, Terry Kim, Varese, Kaudi Mora, Y Lee, History Cannon, Backspace OTI, Safron X, Anwar NHI, Ziggy Deer, Flidiot, Knife Suit, Chen125, Cloudfix, Gusus Rodriguez, Froggy, Vyra, Trevor, Michael Machaka, Ratius, Justin Vale, Silvio Nato, Stevie Zhang, Afterlord underscore MS, Simak, Striker Elk, Tidal One Pan, Victor Sunstrom, Radical Jaws, Riser RU, Gummy Bullet, Lovebird, Sertito655, Matthias Simonson, Mr. Nark, Kalando Balavia, my name is Coppersan and I'm super cute XOXO, PC Game Life, Dante Victory, Stanislav Sumo Vegas, Swap to Bish, Road to Level 235, 30k stat, exclamation mark reboot, The Passenger, Martin Panzik, I'm Disappointed, Lucky Beats, Gabriel Eck, Pedro Bonetti, Ken Rakastalis, Ace Light, Ben Wolf, Max Bernhardt, Doc on a Tucker Box, Muka 1017, BMB King, Scotty Flies Fast, and Priscilla. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and happy mapling!